Hello everyone and welcome to this painting and assembling a video for Kingdom Death Monsters starting survivor Lucy, the blue haired one. Cause yeah, their hair color kinda is all different and not really natural in the case of definitely two of them. Uh, for the starting survivors, and I say that because it remains the same over the various versions that exist. So, for example, the winter version of Lucy that recently came out this past winter. But, I digress. Lucy is one of the easier models to assemble. Not as easy as Alistair, who is literally only three pieces, the brown-haired one. But, yeah, it wasn't too hard. Uh, I ended up taking apart the body here because it really didn't line up too well, oh, and then I put it back. There still ends up being a small bit of a gap, but honestly, primer ends up filling that gap for the most part. But yeah, it's just boop, boop, done. Uh, she's one of the easier ones to put together. I didn't need to putty her or anything, and then here is the base. Uh, again, I don't really do too many recordings of assembling models of five pieces or less anymore, but this was also recorded nearly two and a half years before I painted the model. Yay! Because the survivors were, or at least the starting ones, were the, some of the first things I assembled. So, here is the base coat being started, which is primarily just flesh, hair, and the cloth. The flesh is a slightly darker skin tone than uh, Zachary was. Or, no, I just realized I have those two backwards. Then Alistair was. I was say, thinking of Zachary earlier. It's hard for me to remember the starting survivor names. But I ended up painting these from lighter to darker. So the next one will be darker, and then the last one will be even darker in term, relative to my videos being posted here. And, again, very pale because there's... No sun. Uh, it, when I get around to people of the sun, they will definitely be of a darker skin tone. Um, but, you know, say la vie, I digress. It's pretty much majority of the model. It's less than the other female model is, who's just really weird. Like, really weird. Also, I have no idea how the cloth is supposed to stay on here. It's not, like, folded into itself like the young survivor is. It's just there. And then the other female model, she's just, you know, using an arm. Regardless. So, painting the cloth, I go with, for the base, a white-ish, like an off-white gray. But it's still definitely gray when you don't see it under the light that's being used for filming here. But it makes a huge difference when it is ink-washed and dry-brushed as opposed to just going with white and then still doing the same. And ends up being all the cloth on the body, as well as the little bit of cloth that's being painted right now on the lantern. The lantern is some of the bigger diversions, or deviations I should say, in color. And I forgot the underside a bit, which I do that a lot. Uh, and then the hair. Lucy always has very curly hair, which is extremely evident in her Death High version. Do look forward to getting around to that eventually, but... Yeah, yeah. Say la vie. so many models to paint, so many. Uh, her hair, I went with a more navy blue because while the hair color of some of these characters is very anime-ish, uh, it, it's usually more on the darker side, except when it's very clearly pink, like it is in the case of the Holy Mage. But yeah, <laughs> oh boy. Always fun. I actually really like how the color turned out. It will probably be the same color scheme that I use for any other version of this character or any character that I want that same color. The founding stone in her hand, as all the starting survivors have founding stones in one hand or the other, is the same color as the base, which is my darkest gray. And then I'm using a, I believe, orange here. It's hard to remember what I did with this because I believe I painted this slightly different than I do object light source. Uh, nowadays, but I usually would have gone with an orange or a yellow, and I genuinely can't remember which one of the two that is. It's probably a yellow now that I think about it. Then some black being very pa carefully painted on to the lantern itself, because, yeah, the metal here is primarily just a metallic black, and lanterns are weird in this setting, considering they're basically just a 
thing that grows off of another thing in the shape of a functioning lantern, but also doesn't have fire on the inside. It's like a bioluminescent organism. So, yeah, again, painting it real carefully, which I usually don't really do too much anymore for the base coat because I'm just trying to get models done and out. But, eh, I did this time as this was painted a little bit over a year ago from the time I'm recording this. And another thing I don't usually do on camera is painting the eyes, which I do here. Which, get the inkish kind of paint on, which for this model I did actually paint on, as opposed to just drowning in an ink wash, which is what's happening right now with the rest of the model. Because, again, the starting survivors are described to all have ink caked eyes. It's not all survivors because they do say that it can be rubbed away or more importantly newborns are born without it and it's probably just something I'll do for the four starting survivors regardless of what incarnation it is for them within the setting. So like the 10 year anniversary I'll definitely do it for them. But here's the ink wash. Uh, I still at this point in time was not really good with ink washing flesh especially large portions of it. So, yeah, it, it definitely ends up kind of dirty looking, which I don't mind for the starting survivors, because let's face it, there's no way they were not either caked in dirt and or blood. Because, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy, this setting. It's dark and messy. That's why I love it. But, yeah. It makes, it still brings some detail out of the hair, even though it's a darker color, uh, which is why it's heavily ink washed. Um, brings detail out of, well, where the legs are put together and the fact that the breasts are breasts. And most importantly, brings a lot of detail out of the cloth. Because otherwise it would just look very flat as it did earlier. And then a quick ink washing of the base because, well... I still like to ink wash my bases unless they're literally meant to be just a flat color. Then on to the dry brush. Uh, she's so pale that I did the whole thing in white. I probably shouldn't have done that because I don't think that was the palest flesh that I had and that's usually the only time that I then dry brush flesh in white and even then I, that doesn't really feel right. I'm still like again flesh is not something that I'm really good with. But it did make her very easy to dry brush because then I could just go right over the cloth while I was at it. Uh, this kind of thing happens every now and then. Either the color next to something that's being dry brushed, the base coat is the dry brush, or they're being dry brushed the same thing, even when it's two different base coat colors. The face gets kind of messy because of this. I had to be real careful not to, you know, dry brush the ink caked under the eyes and such because that that's just supposed to be jet black and then some sky blue onto the navy blue-ish hair which really makes a little detail stand out and again why i really like how it turned out it's really fun to paint non-natural hair color honestly it, it, it's just really interesting especially when it doesn't look like a sheet of cloth is effectively the hair uh, the base is being done in a light gray real quick, so is the founding stone, because there's not a lot to it. And then comes the metallic for the lantern, or at least the housing for it, because again, it's still very much, you know, metal. It is a scrap item in the game. Then yellow is being used for dry brushing the lantern's light, and then for object source lighting. Um, this is something that I probably would have done orange in later stuff, but still comes out very nice. Uh, the yellow, uh, like, usually what I do for object light sourcing is whatever the base coat was for said light source, I will use for the object lighting. Um, it was very nice to do in this one. I had to restrain from going too far down the leg, honestly, at one point. But, yeah, that's the entire model. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to press that like button. If you think somebody else will enjoy this video, feel free to share it. Either way, I'll help this video get seen more. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and press the dislike button. I won't mind, but please leave a constructive comment as to why. Either my rambling that I do for commentary on this, or just painting techniques. I'm more than willing to learn from people, or just take advice. And if you want to comment in general, feel free to, be that about Kingdom Death Monster in general, or you want to hear more about the setting and lore, similar games, 
think, or anything along those lines. I'm still trying to do more King of Death videos in general, but one thing at a time. I've got a lot of unboxing videos to catch up on. And if you'd like to see more like this, be it more painting videos, my unboxing videos, my board game overviews, all three of which I do for Kingdom Death Monster, anything else you might want to see on this channel, feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye!